Taft Farms has been in the family for decades. Dan Tuzinski and his son Paul have seen every kind of economy, but this, this is new. We have had ads running in the paper, ads running online, and I have a stack of applications of people that I wouldn't dream of hiring. A shortage of workers. Qualified people are few and far between. It's not that people can't run a cash register. It's not that people can't make a sandwich. You look at their job history and it's one after another after another and you realize this isn't an employable person. It seems as though all the employable workers are employed. The job market is booming, but the percentage of Americans working or looking for work is near a 40-year low. Economist Alan Kruger noticed a link between the missing workers and opioid use. If you look at the counties where more medication is being prescribed, we've seen a bigger drop in the labor force participation rate for both men and for women. An increase in the prescription rate can account for between 20% and 25% of the decline. Contractor John O'Brien knows the signs. I have a, a little list in my head of, of things I watch for. Person X is, is really, really good on certain days, and then on other days it looks like he's just completely uh, lost. A guy who has a backpack and he's very protective of it and he brings it absolutely everywhere we go and it's always that big backpack, that's, that's a really good red flag. Have you ever hired somebody and then realized quickly, oh no? I have a substance abuse issue here that's not safe. Unfortunately, all too many times. I've had to let people go in literally every aspect of the business, from out in the field to in the back, in the kitchen, in the store. We've also dealt with a lot of people that are going through the recovery process, and there are stages, and there are relapses. And unfortunately, if there's even the slightest relapse, you can't take it. We've had to let some people go that you, you really root for, and you want to make it, and you can see the potential but you also, as a business owner, you can't hold that person's hand through the process. I have to look at it from this standpoint. Is this a person I would put on a $50,000 piece of equipment and turn loose in the field where they could wreak havoc? This is a new part of the economic story, the opioid epidemic, a personal tragedy now holding back the labor market. We have an epidemic that is killing over 30,000 people a year that's going to have macroeconomic consequences. And we're pretty close to full employment now. If the U.S. is going to see faster growth, it's going to come about because we find workers somewhere. Um, the best source, I think, are the workers who are out of the labor force trying to figure out ways to make it possible for them to regain their footing and return to the labor force. That's what Dr. Jenny Michaels does for a living. She is the medical director at the Breen Center for Addiction Treatment. We have a lot of ignorance about this uh, disease. A person with addiction has a brain that's different than a person who does not have this disease. But we struggle with that. And we judge people. And we also love to punish them. We love to put them in jail rather than rehabilitating them. For so many years, it's almost very American to define yourself by what you do. Right now, they're being defined by their addiction. And addiction is one of the most stigmatizing diseases in the world. Amy Borden was once one of those missing workers. Being uh, addicted is like a full-time job with overtime. Yes, it's every day, 24 hours a day, seven days a week. That's, that's the only thought in your mind. And it's a job that you can't get fired from. I would work a month and then quit or be fired because I didn't show up. That checkered work history, a red flag for small business owners, at 47, Borden has been in recovery for nearly 11 years. She says the gaps in her resume made employers hesitant to hire her. I filled out numerous applications and I didn't even get a call. So a lot of times there wasn't even the opportunity to say this is what happened, this is why there's the gaps. Amy is now by all accounts a success story. Treated at the Breen Center, she now works here helping other people through recovery. When you think of the hurdles to getting to where you are and then to hear from employers who say, you know, I, I just, I'm not, I'm not ready to hire somebody in recovery. I think the judgment and the stigma has to go away. It has to. You have to listen to the person and just be understanding that it's a disease. Without financial stability, most people will relapse. 
because of the stress of how do I support my family. So we have to be given the opportunity. It's not a death sentence. If someone has diabetes that's not treated, they're not going to do well. But if we treat that disease, the sky's the limits. You know, it's true for addiction also. Treating the epidemic, imperative for families, communities, and business. So you can really see how not being able to get workers can hold back how much you can grow and how much business you can do. Absolutely, I could hire two guys, three guys today. And uh, it, it makes uh, expanding my business very difficult, not having the resources to get to everybody who's calling. With the business owners, they're just sick and tired of seeing the same old, same old, uh, hearing the same excuses, having the same problems that in the end really does come down to hurting the wallet.